Hey there, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. I'm Dan and this is Plant Abundance on YouTube. We're back in the backyard food forest today and I'm going to be sharing with you once again one of my favorite plants I have growing back here, none other than the goji berry, also known as Lycium barbarum. Now I've got several plants growing along the fence here. This is the chicken run and it doubles as some extra protection keeping the chickens contained if I ever put them into the coop in the run. Uh, these plants are actually growing up a four foot wire fence. The fence ends here. The plants continue to grow up well above and beyond the fence line. But just check out all the abundance of berries just growing all over these plants. We've been harvesting non-stop for months. Late spring, throughout the summer, now we're almost into fall, still getting plenty of berries. So I thought I'd just do another plant profile video and just share with you my thoughts and ways that you can utilize these berries. We love to eat them raw. That's primarily how we consume. There are other ways to go about it. You can definitely dry these out and preserve them, save them for a later time, and use those dried berries to make tea, throw them in a trail mix. Um, you can definitely make a juice if you got enough. I think it would take quite a bit though to make a decent amount of juice. So unless you're doing it commercially, I just uh, recommend eating them raw. But these plants now have been in the ground in this area for about four years I believe and they're extremely drought tolerant which is another thing that I absolutely love about these plants see a bee just coming around now help pollinate some of the flowers that are still coming on it's just a constant flow a cycle of flowers green small berries and ripe red berries but they are extremely drought tolerant which is another thing I love we've only watered these plants a few times this season They've gone months at a time without any water. They really don't require any fertilization. Although late spring I did give it a dose of some fish emulsion. That's for a bit of nitrogen and mineral content. But they'll do fine even without any fertilizer in my experience. Anyway, let me share with you my favorite way to actually eat these berries. I'll just find a heavily loaded branch. Let's go back to this one here. And... I'll simply eat right off the branch. Doesn't get any faster than this. Talk about fast food. Mm. My gojis have a lot of flavor. There's a nice sweet finish. A little bit bitter up front, not much so. I wouldn't compare it to a cranberry or anything like that. Let's have some more here. Mm. Now the leaves, when they're in their younger stage, also have edible qualities. I know they're traditionally used in chicken soup in Chinese culture. We have yet to actually utilize the plant that way till this point but we'll get creative and start doing that sometime soon pardon me i don't mean to be rude and eat on camera but this is the best way to eat these berries mm. and a lot of folks have talked about these plants having thorns but really what it is is these small branches are kind of pointy and sharp when they're first getting going but as they get longer they kind of dull at the end and just become another branch so thorns aren't an issue there may be some varieties that do have thorns but I haven't come across any yet hmm. another great thing about these plants is that they're cold hardy and they can withstand temperatures all the way down to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit with no issues so that's also a plus between the cold hardiness, the drought tolerance, the fact that the leaves are edible, the high berry protection. Uh, there's just so much to love about this plant that I just want to make another video for you guys just to encourage you to give it a go, give it a try. I think you're going to have better success actually growing these in the ground rather than in pots. And another thing I wanted to touch on was I've heard quite a few times that these plants can be very invasive and it's something you should be highly concerned about. Not in my experience whatsoever. I haven't had a single goji berry plant pop up anywhere throughout my food forest at any time. What it does do 
is it puts out some shoots. And here's an example. Here's a, sh a new plant popping up here about three feet away from the main plant. And here's what I do. I just pull that puppy out. You could replant this if you want, as you can see. It'd make a nice little plant. But that's all it takes. So if you're doing any type of control and maintenance of the plants, they're not going to get out of control on you. Well, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. Hope you're all having a wonderful evening. And until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.